Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Space Engine. Today, we're doing another relaxing tour of space in Space Engine. Basically, we're just going to try to find the most unique planets, coolest planets we can over the next, I don't know, 45 minutes. So you guys know how this works. Um, let's start somewhere in the Milky Way, but not not too close to where we are. OK, so here is the Milky Way from an outside perspective. Let's go, let's just like pick, let's go somewhere next to the edge. So if you've never actually seen Space Engine before, it is a full model of the universe and it'll generate planets and stars realistically, but these aren't like, these aren't real planets, but it tries to simulate them in the most realistic way possible. So you can see this planet here. It has super fine detail on it. Um, Space Engine actually does a better job of simulating fake planets than real planets because if it doesn't know something, it can just make it up. But if it doesn't know something about a real planet, it doesn't want to, you know, give you wrong information. So here's our first planet that we're looking at today. This is a cold, arid aquaria and no life or anything on this one. But it does look like it has volcanoes probably inactive but they are here whoa look at the is that that might have just been a camera effect because look at those like circular things i wonder what those are because when i get close they kind of disappear hmm this is the top of a, of a volcano though so take a look at how big that is that's so thick you can like see it if you go at an angle Wow. Okay. That's our first planet, but we're going, our goal today is really to find unique planets and we will end up using the star browser, which lets us search for planets. But right now let's just take a look around in the Milky Way. So what I'm doing right now is just clicking on stars and hitting F2 and F2 will open the solar system browser, which shows, shows us all the different planets that are in that system. So this one kind of looks cool. Wow, okay, so this is torrid, so it's actually really hot. It, it does look cold. What's the temperature? Temperature 998 Celsius. So it might be like Venus where the atmosphere is just super thick. Because if you turn off, look, the clouds cover the entire surface. You cannot see the surface unless I turn off the clouds. So let's go land on it. Okay, we're here on the planet. Wow, you can see the cloud, like there, the sun, well, the star, it's not the sun, is right there and you can't really see it. But if you turn off the clouds, look, it's like a beautiful day, blue sky planet, but with clouds, like it's a huge blanket covering this planet and it's getting super hot, it looks like. So these are some of its moons. Here's a small moon, asteroid. Space Engine will load insane detail on even like these asteroids. It's kind of really cool. You like, this is a very realistic view of what it would actually look like to be standing on an asteroid. Like, look, we are, okay, so we're on this asteroid and this asteroid's orbiting that planet, but being on the asteroid and looking up into the sky is like, that's an insane experience. Um, I hope one day they add like walking physics to this game so you could like simulate the gravity like walking on this planet and jumping um whoa that's cool those are all lined up take a look at that you can actually see them moving if you zoom in enough yeah 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 there you go okay what is that that little red dot that's lava okay that's lava that's a volcano let's see if we can actually go find that that's cool Wait, 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 wait. Go this way. So this planet looks like it's, or it's a moon. It's slightly volcanically active. Uh, let's see if I can find another glowing spot. Take a look at that, like the, the detail. Okay, look, look right there. Tiny bit of lava. Let's go fly to that. Wow, okay, it's bright. 
Um, so it looks like... Whoa, wait, that's kind of weird. It's not even, like, at the top of a volcano. It's just, like... Maybe this is the beginnings of a volcano. Um, it looks like it's very cratered, so... It's probably almost done in its volcanic state. Because after a long time, moons will cool down. Like, our moon used to have volcanoes, but it doesn't anymore. So it looks like this one might be cooling down. Because it looks like it's... It's not a new moon. Because look at all these craters. It's been here for a while. And it's also smoother over here. It's almost like lava or a collision happened and smoothed out this part and maybe made the surface warmer so you get some volcanic activity. Anyway, let's go find a new system. Okay, uh, there's a star cluster. We're just gonna take a look. That one looks kind of cool. Eventually we're gonna find some planets with life and Whoa. And a bunch of other stuff. Is this water or is it just purple mountains for some reason? I think it's purple mountains. Oh, it's not even purple. It's like red. The blue atmosphere mixed with the red on the landscape. So what color is this? Okay, that's like yellow. Whoa, look how vibrant these colors are. And I think this landscape might be a little bugged because look at these colors. Wow, I have not seen colors show up like this before in this game. I mean, it could just be bugged generation, but these red mountains are cool too. Oh, these aren't even mountains. It's pretty flat over here, actually. Um, I do like the way this one looks. Let's take a look at the other side of it. We'll wait for night. Okay, well, here's the northern pole area. Is this that red rock too? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, okay, we're in the night now. And this one has rings. Rings are always really cool. Okay, these peaks are these... These are inactive volcanoes with snow on them. That's what it appears like. But is it snow? It's hard to tell. It looks like it could just be rock. Because I don't know if this planet has any water. So it might not be snow. This planet has 12 moons. You can see that here. Number of moons, 12. Mm, only a couple that aren't asteroids, and there's tiny still, micro terras. Like, this is one of its bigger moons. This actually looks a lot like the Mun from Kerbal Space Program, but look how, like, the difference in elevation. Like, looking at it, you can s totally see the higher parts and the lower parts, when on a really big object, you can't see that. And look how actually dramatic these landscape changes are these are like giant mountains like being here okay how fast am i going i'm going 125 meters a second so i'm really going very fast how, how fast does an average human run uh this is six meters per second maybe something like that so you can imagine how long it would take to travel on an object like this but I really love, like, you can actually view the texture like that. Okay, let's play time at a real speed. So this is time passing at a one-to-one -one scale ratio with reality. Uh, and if you zoom in, you should be able to see a little bit of movement. Yeah, you can see that it's moving. If you zoom in enough. Zoomed out there, you're not really going to notice things like that. Okay, uh, let's, let's go find a nebula. I'm actually think, I actually think I'm going to leave the Milky Way for now. So all these dots here are nearby galaxies. There's the Milky Way. So our local groups like this little area here, and then we're part of, you know, whatever cluster. I don't know the names of everything. Um, but let's go. Okay, this galaxy is still pretty close. I'm sure this is a real galaxy. We can check here. Yeah, real object. So Space Engine will take everything we know about an object and add that to it, but anything we don't know, it'll make up. So I don't know if this is what it actually looks like or if it's just estimating, but this is an irregular shaped galaxy. It's not a flat disk like a lot of galaxies are. Um, let's turn up the nebulae brightness. 
we can do that in here and that'll help us find those you'll see all these colorful dots start to appear Ooh, green let's go to that green one whatever this is here a planetary nebula okay take a look at this So I'm pretty sure these are usually supernova remnants and that's why there's only one star here and it's a uh, it's what's left of the supernova. And it does have planets though. Let's take a look at one of these planets. Okay, here's one of them. You can see a nebula in the background too. So there's a few different lighting styles that Space Engine has. This is more of an HDR. This is so you can see a lot of things at once. But if you want more realistic, you can set it to auto, which is going to give you a more limited range of light. But this is more realistic. So it looks like it has these sort of scratches the same as, I think it's Enceladus. Or it's one of Jupiter's moons that has these scratches. That looks like an impact crater, not a volcano. You can tell because of the, these are like lines coming out from the impact. So this planet's really been through it. This is a binary planet actually with this one. They're binary with each other. Not super interesting. Let's see if we can find life around this area. Probably it won't be in this nebula. So our max range we can search is 400 light years. So we'll set it to that. And we can set our object parameters here. We're gonna go temperate marine terra with uni multicellular life go so this is actually a very strict search i'm doing one hit yeah okay so only one system within 400 light years match the description i gave it and it looks like this planet here is what matched Okay, so this does look a lot like Earth. So there's a few different things we can look at. Um, it's Earth's similarity index right here, ESI, is 0 0.909. And if it's a 1, that means it's exactly like Earth. So this is 90.9. Yeah, 90.9% like Earth. Let's take a look at it. So already I see we have these canyons that have water in them, which obviously is going to be great for life. The only problem is the sky looks like polluted. It's like a really big city <laughs> where there's been a lot of pollution, um, which isn't ideal for looks, but that does not really matter for the development of life. And the beings that lived here wouldn't know that that was weird. You can see there's actual grass on the surface. I hope Space Engine one day will add trees and other vegetation simulation um but it is hard to predict because we don't know if they'll have trees or what kind of life other planets would have so it looks like here's a kind of a little tropical area uh you can see the the water is more shallow and we almost have a like a sandbar with its own little river running through this tropical area and then it looks like we have pink, um, mineral, like rock. What even is that? That's like cracked desert flooring. But it looks, yeah, it's like coming out of the ground with um, mountains and hills and stuff. And that is mixed with the green areas. So the actual amount of water on the surface isn't a ton. I'm surprised these areas over, over here aren't more dry because how are they getting water to these plants? I don't know. Um, and let's see what nebulas are around. So we can see a few. Once again, they're turned up way brighter than realistic, so you wouldn't be able to see them this well. Let's actually go on this planet at night. So this is a night sky on the planet. We'll go more realistic lighting. Um... Looks like we can see a little bit. It kind of brings up the sunlight more than it really should, but there's a few. It's also cool because if you're in a completely different galaxy, the constellations are going to be completely different. So I'm guessing realistically, if you were here, 
while obviously the nebulae wouldn't be this bright. Um, you would probably see the night sky more like this. And you could totally make out some constellations, like this here could be something that almost looks like the Pleiades. And there's a star cluster in there. So if human-like life, intelligent life developed, it'd be interesting to see how they did constellations. Because like this, that's definitely going to be important. I wonder if there's like a northern star type thing that they all kind of rotate around. Yeah, it looks like that star here is kind of like the northern star around that area. Um, if you didn't know, the northern star doesn't move at all, Com like relative to Earth. It's because the northern star is right above the Earth. So as the Earth rotates, the northern star doesn't. Okay, let's let's go. I'm going to go. Let's find a cool looking galaxy and then we'll look inside of it. So I'm just going to click on galaxies and go up to them. Okay, this actually has two galaxies right next to each other. So if I find a planet that's like in this star system here, you would be able to see both galaxies. But it would depend on what season you were in. Um, like which part of your year you would see. Okay. Whoa, wait. Okay, what is all this surrounding the star? Are these little asteroids? Yeah. Okay, this one looks like a young star system with a lot of planets forming still. Yeah, because look, all these planets, this is the furthest out planet. It is still burning hot with lots of little stuff. So this system, it's this is how solar systems form. There's a lot of dust and asteroids that all get gravity pulls them all together. So this is a younger system with... Wow, okay. So this, not a realistic lighting. I wonder if we'll be able to see anything because everything is so bright. We might have to go on one of these little moons. So we're going to go on the night side on this moon. And, okay. We're going to need to adjust our exposure a little bit. Okay, this might be a little bit brighter than what you would actually see. But if you look up, there it is. There's a galaxy in your view. Um, and since the galaxies are opposite, you're not going to be able to see both in the sky at the same time. But in the right instances, you should be able to see the other galaxy too, which we might. Yes. Okay. So we can see this is the star. So realistically, the star is going to take up the entire brightness of your sky like this. Um, but if you waited till the planet was like six months relative, it, I mean, time's different per planet. But basically half of the year you'll see this in your night sky and half of the year you're going to see this, which is really cool. Also, look at that. That's a pretty color on this planet. I'm sure it's because it's molten and it is a very young asteroid or moon of this planet. So overall, yeah, this is a super young system. Really cool to see, especially since this is on the far edge of the galaxy. We can even look at the age. Age is 6.9 times 10 to the 9 years. But like, what's the age on these? Does it even give us a correct one? I mean, I don't know what it goes for with the age because it says 10 to the 6th years, which is a long time. Wow, okay. So there's two galaxies next to each other. It's actually kind of rare to find them that close, especially, are these real? The galaxies, they could be because we're still kind of close to the Milky Way. Yeah, okay, that galaxy's real. Is this one real? Yeah, so these are actually two real galaxies that are close to each other. Um, I wonder, like, how many of these are real? That one's real. That one's called KK13. Interesting. Okay, I think if it says NGC, it's real. And if it says RG, it's random. Yeah. Because RG means random galaxy. Wait, hold. That one looks cool. That one's very, very dense, it looks like. It has a lot of stars. Like, just take a look at the amount of stars in this system. Well, okay. YouTube compression is definitely going to destroy it. My face probably looks blocky right now. 
Uh, let's turn down the stars because I turned them up a tiny bit. Okay, this should probably help with compression. Moving through a lot of different things like this will make YouTube compress things. Okay, here's a gas giant. It's a mini Neptune. So it's actually an, an ice giant maybe? But look at the colors on that. Oh, whoa. Okay, I don't know what these like little dots are that kind of, it, it looks like a W. Or I don't know, lightning strike? Like what causes those? Are they storms? Oh, they are storms. You can kind of see it. I wonder if you can get the exposure better. But yeah, those are storms, I'm pretty sure. Is that a storm too? Yeah, there's different colored storms. Because you know how Jupiter has like the great red spot. See, there's a bigger storm. Um, and Neptune has great dark spot, which those are both storms on the planet. Okay, let's take a look in this galaxy still. Very, whoa, look at the contrast of colors right here as it goes from like the darker parts of the galaxy to these more brighter parts. Uh, let's find a cool planet around here and look at the night sky. Let's search for life right here. Okay, we got one, two. These are all super Earth-like planets too. Okay, so we got a few to look at. Let's take a look at these. We'll just take a look in whatever one looks coolest. That one's kind of green. That one's also green. Interesting. Okay, this one looks a lot like Earth. This one has two planets with life in this system. But take a look at this one. So this one has an Earth similarity index of 89.3%. Um, very similar to Earth. It looks like... How's our size? Okay, the mass is only half of Earth, but the atmosphere pressure is 12 times earth so the pressure is super high on this planet so it might be kind of weird for earth or for humans to live here but its own type of life could easily develop let's go first let's watch a sunset let's go and take a look at this look at these uh i don't even know what you call these lakes it's like rivers plus lakes there's a lot of mountains um, it's not just like one big body of water. It's broken up a lot, which is, is really cool. So let's stand. Let's go over here. I'm going to go on this little hill and we're going to watch a sunset. Unless it's tidally locked. Oh my goodness, it is. So if you see solar day right here, it says infinite, which means that it, the sun will never set because the planet's tidally locked which means the same side always faces its star. So to see a night sky, all we gotta do is go to the night side. And if life developed on this side, they would live in eternal darkness. Um, but they'd have pretty cool views of the night sky, as you can see, that looks so cool. It's like a very definitive line that splits the sky between a lighter side and a darker side. Wow. That's cool. Am I in an ocean? Yeah, I'm in, there's an ocean on this side. We can actually turn up, I wonder what the, this side looks like. If we turn up ambient lighting, we should be able to start to see this side, there we go. Okay, so there's the difference between the sides. That's what this side looks like, and this side still has life, it looks like. There's grass and stuff growing. It actually looks pretty similar. Um, if this were real, I would expect most of the life to develop actually right here between the light and the dark because too much sun's bad, but not enough sun is also bad. So right in this little Goldilocks zone where you could still get the, the vitamins and whatever from the sunlight, but you're not getting the UV. The UV radiation's not destroying you. And the temperature is probably more reasonable right here. Can we look? Temperature right here is 28 Celsius, which is a good temperature, actually. I wonder how much does that change? If I go to the, the
the day side, the temperature is 38, which is pretty hot. And on the night side, it is only, it's 38 also. Okay, so I don't know how realistic it, oh wait, no, it's changing. Wait, what, what's changing? Anyway, let's, okay, we had a few more on here. Let's see if some of these have proper day night cycles. That one's also tidally locked. That's interesting. I wouldn't think that that many would be tidally locked. Also tidally locked. Interesting. Is this one? What? This one is also tidally locked. Maybe tidal locking is more common than I think it is. The colors on this one are cool. There's an eclipse happening. But look at the colors of the, they're kind of pinkish. Whoa, they're super bright orange once you get down here. You can actually see the eclipse happening. Let's go under and see the eclipse. Is it... Okay, wait. There, you can see it. That little moon is blocking the sun. But, I mean, we just ended it. Sunspots. Like, I'm surprised how much detail Space Engine can really know about... I mean, it doesn't know. It's making this up. But it seems realistic. Are those... Okay, these clouds are kind of wispy. Grassy areas. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, that was the edge. Let's go to the very center of this galaxy. Um, cause I'm pretty sure the night sky is going to have a lot more stars if we are in the middle. Is that the central black hole? Cause I'd be super lucky to find. No, it's not. Oh, I did not mean to move it like that. Like, just look, it doesn't even look like there's that many stars. And then you actually go up here and I still, I had to turn the star brightness down because it's the compression still probably getting ruined. It's okay. Uh, let's find... A cool looking planet. Okay, I don't know if this is actually... It kind of looks like it's inside of its ring. Which would be cool, but it's not. It's just next to it. So let's keep looking. That system is all orange. That system's all blue. Oh, here's a black hole. Um, It looks like... So in this system, the star and the... Black hole are binary. Uh, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's the giant star. And just this black hole has little... Are these asteroids, I'm assuming? Yeah, so this black hole has its own tiny little, almost accretion disk of a few different small objects. And then this star and the black hole together are holding in these planets. You can see the orbit lines. So what does it look like to be on this tiny little glowing it's that's very right wait okay wait so the black hole and the star are orbiting each other and orbiting just the black hole this little tiny torrid asteroid is here or mini terra and then orbiting the mini terra there's an asteroid so the levels of orbits here look at that it is glowing so just being on here um, I wonder how well can you see the black hole? Because black holes don't give off light, but the accretion disk does. So that really bright thing there is the black hole. And it's not the actual black hole. It is the energy being... Okay, I don't think you're supposed to zoom in on black holes because look at what it's doing. Oh, wow. I'm like breaking the game. You can see it there. Whoa, here's the moon of that planet. Whoa, okay. I don't know why, but I really like the look of these really cratered moons. I think it, it feels more real when it has so much detail put onto the surface. It's not just smooth. Uh, oh, we got these little scratchy things too. I actually don't know what causes those. If someone knows, you should... You should put it in the comments. What causes these? Because these are, these are, we know these exist. They exist in our solar system too. 
one of my favorite things to do actually is to like zoom in and see how these are moving in real time. So this is a real time view of this moon. And you'll see it very slowly. It is moving. This is almost like a, a cool moving wallpaper. Maybe not that fast, like this fast. Maybe one slower. Like this. Like, and Space Engine generated all this in like high detail. Okay. Okay, it is time to leave our little local group. Because pretty much everything we've looked at so far has been kind of well, relatively close to the Milky Way. I mean, it's still very, very, very far. Like millions of light years. But you can see we're flying through interstellar, intergalactic space. Interstellar just means between stars. Intergalactic means between the galaxies. And you can actually see how much empty space there is in outer space. Like, look, if I was going, I don't know. I'm still going. Okay, this is 25,000 light years every second. I'm moving right now. Going 25,000 light years a second. And I'm not really moving. How fast till I actually start to visibly move? That's two. Is that million? Yeah, that has to be million. Yeah, 650,000 light years. Two million light years a second. And things are just barely moving. So if I was light, it would take two million years to go how fast I went in one second, if that makes any sense. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it shows you how big the universe is. That galaxy seems unusually bright. Maybe it's super big. Uh, it is 326,000 light years across. Uh, it kind of looks similar to the other ones we've been looking at. I want Let's find a unique looking galaxy. You can't open the F2 menu like you can with systems. Okay, that's just a young galaxy. Take a look at this one. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Is this a galaxy here? It must be a tiny galaxy. What? Why does it... It's right next to this other one. Yeah, it's just tiny. Look. It is almost like a star cluster. Because, like, look at that galaxy there, and then this is a whole galaxy, too. But, I mean, even the smallest of galaxies, you can see how many stars are in here. Wow. I bet there's star clusters in here. Let's find one in here. Let's find a planet. A cool planet. Oh, wow. Okay, this one's cool. The colors that it can generate on all these planets are very, very cool. That's such a cool looking planet. Like look at all the different colors that are inside of its bands. You got very, very green. Is that part of its atmosphere? Whoa, okay. So the atmosphere is green. The actual planet is purple and white and almost blue. And look at the, the texture it even gives you for these storms and swirls. Look at that. That is insane. Unfortunately, we can't look at planets in our solar system with this much detail because we don't know what it actually looks like. Like if I zoomed in on Jupiter, it would just be a blurry mess. But because this is a fake planet, it can just say whatever it wants, which is really cool actually. And adding back the atmosphere, you can see it's got a green little layer on top. We should be able to travel underneath this layer. Okay, well, I'm like inside the gas now, which is not exactly what I wanted. It's almost like the green penetrates through the whole thing. Oh, I mean, it's a gas giant, so it would make sense that the atmosphere is kind of part of the whole thing. Because um, even when I go underneath the first layer of clouds, you just just green everywhere. What if I take that out? It's black. Whoa, okay, I don't think I'm supposed to be under a gas giant. That seems weird. Very cool planet. Oh, also one of my favorite things is to look at the moons of gas giants because if you've seen the new Avatar, you'll know what I'm talking about. A view of a gas giant in a sky is just amazing. Let's go to this asteroid and we'll take a look. 
So the asteroid's facing away from the sun, so all the light that we're getting is f the reflection from the gas giant. Okay, so this isn't super realistic. You probably wouldn't see that. Yeah. This is what you see if you were here. Like, just in all of its glory. This gas giant. Super cool. This is a pretty small asteroid. I like these little craters too. Wow. I don't know, something about it. Okay, let's, 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 let's go out here. So that galaxy we were looking at there, that's not even the same galaxy. That's a whole separate galaxy. It almost seems like this galaxy's a star cluster on the edge of that one, but it's not. When you have, whoa, wait, go back. That star, look at the texture on this. This is a star. This is not a planet. When stars get super big, they can't stay super circular because um, inside of them, well, gravity is pushing on them, but it's also pushing back on gravity and it kind of gets deformed like this. So we can kind of like traverse the mountains of a star. That is insane. Okay, wait. Am I stuck? Oh, wait. I just hit, and the star is so big. I have to go. Okay, I'm going 10 times the speed of light. So that should show you how big this star is. I'm going the 10 times faster than the speed. Of light. Let's go one. Can I go one? Okay, I'm going the speed of light. So this is not planetary size mountains. These mountains are huge. Huge. If you're going to speed of light, you can go around the Earth seven times in one second, I'm pretty sure. So, one 1,000. That's Earth. That's Earth. We just traveled Earth seven times. Wow. Okay, this is cool. I've never actually gone through solar mountains like this. I wonder how realistic this is if stars would look like this up close. Well, okay, let's be honest. Uh, your eyes would immediately burn up. It would look like this. This is what it would look like. <laughs> and then you'd be blind and you wouldn't see anything. But if you, I don't know, solar eclipse glasses maybe and you somehow didn't burn to death, it could look something like this. Wow. Like, I'm still surprised that they put enough effort to load in the detail. Like, look at these little tiny... Okay, once you get super close, the detail starts to break down. But... Like, this just looks like a mountain around me. This is multiple times the size of Earth high. Like, hundreds of Earths. Tall. Just this one little pillar there. And then look at the entire thing. Oh, it's a super giant. Wow. Anyway, what's in this system? Whoa. Okay, the colors and rings on this look sick. Look at those rings. They're kind of like... Uh, spread apart. They're not one solid ring. Let's fly in them and see how that looks. So once you get close enough, they're gonna turn into kind of... Whoa, why are they so bright? There we go. It's because they reflect light so easily. But you can see the individual ring particles, which obviously this is also gonna destroy the compression. Watch, once I start moving, everything will go blocky on the video. Uh, Cause YouTube's not good at things like that. So let's... <laughs> Oh, okay. This is super mountainous. The entire planet is covered in these uh, rocky things. That's the star we were looking at. I feel like the sky should be brighter. Maybe it's not giving off a ton of energy because it's uh, it, it almost looks like a dying star, which it definitely could be. Okay, this has water on it. Oh, 
Well, there's our day-night cycle. Let's do a slower day-night cycle. Because I wanted to see a sunset. There's a galaxy. Okay. Realistic lighting, time. Or mostly realistic. Yeah, this looks like a realistic sunset. We got the rings. And then our beautiful star sets behind the horizon. There it goes. And then, so this lighting doesn't work super well for night skies. Um, so we're going to go to HDR. And you can still see the rings. That's So this is the galaxy that this planet's a part of, this whole thing here. It doesn't really look like a galaxy, but it is. And then our neighboring galaxy is right there. And that looks way more magnificent than the galaxy that this one's actually a part of. Okay, let's take a trip even further through space. And we'll see what we find along the way. That one almost looks green, which is not. Um, it is brighter, though. So let's take a look at this one. Whoa. Okay. 420. No, no. 326,000 light years across. A beautiful galaxy. Okay, let's start looking around here and see what the most interesting planet we can find is. This one doesn't look bad. It's just a water planet, though, so it's, it's really only cool from space. The surface doesn't look like anything. But taking a look through here... Okay, what is that? That is a star, white dwarf. Look how small that little, it looks like a pixel. This is a white dwarf star. Okay, you can see once I get really close, everything starts to go out of focus. And I'm pretty sure that's from the gravitational field on it. So these are super dense and it almost has a similar effect to black holes. Um, you can see they're super bright, very, very, very bright. These are all asteroids around it surrounding the thing and you can see half of it is burning and half of it is not wow white dwarf okay this one even has a trail is this a comet or oh this is a planet no way so the star is putting out so much energy that the the planet it's getting ripped apart and parts of it are getting launched into space Wow. So this is what happens when you don't have a good atmosphere and magnetic field to protect you from solar radiation. That's what would happen to the Earth if we didn't have a magnetic field. I mean, not that extreme, but that's why magnetic fields are important. Okay, here's my plan now. We're going to fly super far away. Just go as fast as I can. And then we're going to pick a random galaxy. Here we go. We're going to pick a random planet in the galaxy. Um, one we can land on preferably. Ooh, I'm going to go in there. Okay, so here's a planet in a galaxy, right? Random galaxy. Here's what we're going to do. Let's search for Earth. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to search for it. So Earth is right there. I mean, you definitely cannot see it. But let's land like here. You if I zoom in really, really far, I can see anything close to it. Probably not. I highly doubt it. Maybe we could see the Milky Way. No, we can't see anything else as far. So we're here on this planet. And if we, instead of like fast traveling where we go really quickly to the Earth, I'm going to do a slow travel. So here we are on the planet. We're going to go here and we're just going to click go to instead of double tapping G. And you'll see, oh no, I did do the fast travel. You're supposed to just hit G. Anyway, I'll show you what I was trying to do with, um, We'll go to Andromeda. It'd probably be better because we're not going to go super far through space. So here's Andromeda. We'll just land on a random planet really quick. So I, I meant to go slow and like we can watch the whole experience, which is what we're going to do now. 
Um, so you'll see this is, I mean, this galaxy is a lot closer. So Earth is going to be right there. And if we just hit G once, it'll take 20 seconds instead of long or like three seconds. So this is the Andromeda galaxy we're flying through. And you'll see us travel to the Milky Way, which is right there. And into the edge of the Milky Way and to the sun. You should start to see the sun. Yep. And to Earth. That's going to wrap up our space engine exploration video. So you, I hope you learned something or you fell asleep and thanks for the watch time. <laughs> uh, if you want to see another one of these, leave a like so I, I know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.